everyone. Now, before we get started, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. If you want to download illegal stuff and you want to crack stuff, fill your boots, right? I'm not here to tell you what to do. I couldn't give a shit. But I think it's very important that as a community, we at least have discussions and talk about it and not be the elephant in the room. And I'm not going to lie, right? I understand that it's hypocritical for me to talk about stuff like this because I want to kind of talk as a community about people not paying for plugins <laughs> when I don't pay for plugins. From a moral standpoint, again, obviously, I've got the upper hand because I'm like, well, the, the developers choose to give me the plugins. And again, you know, if I kind of feature a plugin in a video, then for that one free license, they might get three back. And that's the way it works on YouTube. It's all about advertising. I'm very, very stubborn. I am just as stubborn as the people that download it illegally. I will contact them or they'll contact me or I will know somebody that has a contact at this company and I will eventually get an NFR. And that's the good thing about YouTubers is that we have NFR licenses, which means that they're not for resale. And to be honest, any YouTuber that sells an NFR is a piece of shit. That's the only thing that I really disagree with when it comes to like, plug-in piracy is people downloading um, cracked copies of stuff and then selling it to other people. That I disagree with. That to me is fucking morally fucked up. But you know, the main point of this video was I wanted to talk about Acoustica's kind of big crack last week. Somebody sent me this kind of whole statement from the like the R2R guys and basically they, they'd done a matrix and went behind the scenes under the code, behind the code of Acoustica and, you know, they'd kind of stated some things that they'd found out. And one of the things that they'd found out was that Acoustica do something in the code or whatever they do, whatever I don't know what it is, whether they, how they compress the files, I don't know. All I know is that Acoustica audio plugins take up more hard drive space because of the way they try and um, secure their plugins. I don't know if it's something in the code or whatever it is. But I mean, Acoustica audio plugins are already, like already, like super, super high on hard drive space as well, as well as CPU. And that's a massive reason why many people have decided not to go down the Acoustica audio route is because one, it's high CPU, but it's also very high, like hard drive space. I've seen Acoustica audio plugins taken as much as like seven, eight gig. On average, most of the plugin suites you can find easily between like, I don't know, maybe average in like four or five gig a plugin. If you buy a lot, that's going to add up quick, especially if you don't have a lot of hard drive space. And I've always just like accepted that because I thought that it was solely due to the fact that it's convolutioned and with every move you make in an Acoustica plugin, it loads an impulse response, which means that you need to have all of these impulse responses, which is going to take up a lot of space, which it does, which is a reason why Acoustica audio plugins do, you know, take up so much hard drive space. But I was very, very surprised to find out, you know, how much extra hard drive space their security protocols take up. They came out and they were just like, this is the way we do it. This We don't believe in piracy. We want to fight against it. And this is the way we've always made our plugins and we're not going to stop, which has obviously pissed off a lot of Acoustica owners because they're like, we are being penalised for people cracking your plugins. Like, why should we have to take such a high hit on our hard drive space? And we want to use your plugins, and it's something that can be avoided. And and this is the issue with plugin piracy, is that, you know, iLock, um, so many plugin developers use iLock. And I understand why they do it, because you've got to try and protect your business. But, you know, when you kind of start to find out that there are certain parts of the plugin that you are buying that's been compromised due to security things, it kind of makes me wonder, well, what else is going on? Like, is this happening with other plugins? And what other ways are plugins being compromised due to security? What are they doing in the code? I mean, are, are certain plugins being more CPU intensive due to security? That's stuff that I don't know and I would like to find out more. And if consumers, you know, people that actually buy the plugins, if there is a way that they can get more efficiency and maybe possibly better performance out of their plugins, then I would say it's it's very it's a very important thing to talk about. Subscription models have made a massive massive impact on uh, illegal downloading because it takes away a lot of the issues that you know illegal downloading can have. For example, if you download a plugin illegally, the upgrade procedure is going to be a nightmare for you. I mean, so you could, for example, a plugin comes out. And, and you crack it, you install it, and it has a big mass, it has a bug in it that comes out, and you're like, shit, I need to get this bug fixed. If you've got a subscription or you own the plugin, then you just get that update. It's like, oh, ping, like, update, right, install, job done. 
But when you download illegally, you've got to wait for somebody to crack that new update and then then install that whole new version and stuff like that. It's an absolute pain in the ass. I mean, there are probably cracked plugins that find a way around this. But from a professional point of view, like i.e. working as a professional in the audio industry, it's just not something that, you know, it's for me. And don't get me wrong, right? I'm I'm not gonna try and be a blue-eyed boy here, right? I grew up in the LimeWire days and the Pirate Bay days. I was a teenager <laughs> when like LimeWire was a big thing. I've been debating whether to say this because I don't know if I'd still get in trouble for this. Fuck it, right? Fuck it. I had a hooky copy of Pro Tools <laughs> back in the day when I was in my early twenties. I had no money, right? I had no money, and I was just like in this mode of like, yeah, just get stuff for free all your life. It's the internet, just quality. <laughs> but you know, my experience with, like, hooky stuff was never, ever, ever good. They always fucking crashed. And Pro... Th- that Honestly, that hooky copy of Pro Tools. I had it as soon as, right after I left uni. And I had it for six months. And then I ended up just saving up. And I ended up buying, you know, my perpetual license of Pro Tools. I actually remember I tried a recording session with a harpist. Came in with my laptop and all my stuff, my mics and stuff. And honestly, oh my god, that was the worst experience I've ever had in audio. It crashed constantly. And I remember like sweating like... Oh yeah, well, was, uh, something went wrong there. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, okay. oh, I don't really think that was a good take there. <laughs> Can you hear that fluffy? Maybe just do that take again. Well, we want to make sure we get it done right, eh? When in actual fact that the fucking Pro Tools was crashing and behind the scenes I was having to restart the computer. Because that's what used to happen. I used to have to do a full restart. I'm not an angel, right? I have been in that position where many young guys and girls and thems and these will be in. I'm skint. Uh, what do you expect me to do? I can't afford fucking money for plugins. I can't afford that. I fucking £200 for a plugin, £80 for a plugin, £40 for a plugin. I could barely afford the fucking eating. And I get it, right? I've been there. However, I will say, like, 10, 12 years ago. <laughs> Free plugins were shit. Like, you don't need to crack plugins anymore, surely, but in terms of, like, how good DAW plugins are, especially if you think Studio One, and the quality of free plugins these days. I'm surprised that people are still cracking plugins. And that's just part of life. That You just have to accept that there are going to be people that are going to cheat the system. <laughs> Like my younger self did. Now, by the way, just in case I have the fucking popo at my door, I don't illegally download. I have not done it in a very, 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 very long time. Like, as soon as my kids came along, that was it, done, right? I do get free shit, right? But I don't illegally download stuff. Again, I'm, as I said at the start of the video, I'm not here to tell you what to do. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it. But I think it's important that we speak about the impact that it's having and, you know, if, you know, plugin developers should just get to a point where they just go, right, let's just scrap all these security measures and just make our plugins the most efficient that we physically can. I think it's a shame that it, that paying consumers are being stifled and compromised in certain ways all because people are illegally downloading stuff. No matter, like, what measures you put in place, these clever geeks are... Then they are geeks. They are, right? <laughs> We're all geeks at the end of the day, but these geeks are going to find a way to do it, right? It is what it is. They're going to find a way of hacking it, regardless of what you do. Even acoustic audio, all the stuff that they put in, they had a big, big crack, right? And it is what it is. You've just got to accept it. At the end of the day, it's a very, very, very tough topic to speak about, and there's a lot of hypocritical, you know, things behind it, you know, and I know that me speaking about it, again, being a, a YouTuber, you know I mean? It, it's There's going to be a, tons, tons of hypocrisy throughout it. But we're may as well speaking about it. I, this is what I hate about the audio industry. Sometimes we are scared to speak about stuff. I'm like, let's just have a conversation about it. Again, like, comment down below. If you fucking crack stuff or you download stuff illegally, fucking comment down below. Like, you've got full anonymity. <laughs> I'm not going to be there behind the scenes. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. My name is Paul Third, and I will find you. I will have a very specific set of artistic skills. I will find you, and I will tell all the people at the plugin developers where you live, I will dox you, and you will stop doing what you've been doing, because I will <laughs> No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not. As I said, you do you, boo, right? Do what you do. I just, let's just have a conversation about it, right? I was very surprised, like, the acoustic audio. Like, I've purposely added a shit ton of fucking hard drive space which has killed me and my fucking hard drive. 
Honestly, I, I, like I've had to uninstall shit tons of acoustical audio uh, stuff off my 500 gig laptop. On my computer, it's alright, but when I do premixing on, on the laptop and stuff like that, I can barely use fucking anything. It's so, so hard. So yeah, let's have a chat about it. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you want to go down a rabbit hole, let's go down a rabbit hole. Let's just see where it goes. My name is Paul Third, and I'll see you again next week.